Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from Budapest, the capital city of Hungary here in Central Europe. I hope everybody has had a safe and a productive week so far and is looking forward to a nice weekend. Hi Bagjan, good to see you in this class as well. Hi Rimshaw, Ashar, Jack, Iman, Saki Bose. Nice to see many students in the class. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS help. Check us out at aehelp.com and join our premium package. And for general IELTS help, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. And now this is a speaking class, students, so make sure to speak and repeat as much as possible, nice and loud and with confidence, okay? Uh, to practice your speaking with other students as well, you can do that on our website. This is our academic IELTS website here at ahelp.com. You can join the premium package by clicking on that button. Then up at the top, you have access to this My Student account here. And in your My Student account, you have what's called a student partner speaking. And I know you, some of you have seen this, but I know for many people it's still new. Uh, so this is the student partner speaking. It works kind of like WhatsApp or Skype, and we're building this more and more every day, every week. So you click on that. You have to accept the policy that you're going to play nice with everyone. And then uh, when you log in, You'll see lots of uh, users, so you can see there's actually three people in here right now, Ankush, Eunice, and Sulia. And uh, you just uh, click on one of those users and you can connect with them. Uh, so basically we've added these simple instructions for now. Uh, just text a hello to another user. You can ask them to video or audio chat. If it's not good, then just try a different user. Uh, remember that in some countries, there are chat restrictions that apply. So uh, you just have to try a different user, okay? And uh, students, members, this is absolutely free, okay? You can use this service for free. Has anybody tried this? Elena, Anatoly, Zatillo, have you tried this speaking yet on our uh, website? Looks like these three people are at it right now. They're speaking to each other. And you have this on the general IELTS as well. So on the G IELTS website, same idea. Click the big red button to join the premium package. Go to your My uh, Student account at the top there. And then when you log in there, you'll have the same. Okay. All right. Yeah, it looks like lots of you have tried that. That's great. Awesome. I'm happy that people are using that. That's fantastic. And again, we're building it more and more next week. We will actually have a pop-up menu where you can choose uh, speaking scripts to study, okay? So, super cool. Okay, so keep using it, students. Keep practicing. Don't be shy, okay? And play nice with each other. That's really important, okay? So today is a cue card, of course, part two. Um, I'm going to tell you how to master answering the cue card, what steps you have to take to get those high band scores, okay? So we'll go through that step by step. If you have questions, if something's not clear, um, just let me know. Send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. I will gladly help you, okay? All right. Uh, let's uh, keep going here. So uh, today, speaking part two, tomorrow, members, it will be questions and answers. And then uh, tomorrow, we will also have speaking part three. So today, speaking part two, tomorrow, speaking part three. Speaking part three is connected to part two. All right, Elena, I think you're in this class, are you not? Uh, you requested this kind of topic. So I thought, hey, why not? It's a great idea. Uh, it was suggested by one of our members, Elena. So this is our part two cue card, okay? The speaking in the IELTS, it's about 12 to 15 minutes. 
Uh, you sit face to face with an interviewer, you introduce yourself, they ask some questions, and then uh, they will say, okay, that's the end of part one. Now we will continue with part two. For part two, uh, I will uh, give you this card with some questions. You will have one minute to think about your answer. Take notes if you wish. Here's some note paper and a pencil. And then you will have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. You turn over the card and this is what you see. There you are, Elena. Yeah. So this was kind of, I believe this is what you're suggesting. Okay. So you turn over the card and your first step, okay, is to really carefully read the question, especially this question statement. Okay, it's very important that you pay careful attention to this first statement. So let's read this uh, together, okay? So talk about an object you got, which is a replica and not original. Yeah, Elena, and I know it's close. I know it's not exactly what you're thinking, but you'll see, Elena, that tomorrow's part three class is exactly what you're thinking with the copyright and everything, okay? So one more time, one more time, students. So talk about an object you got, which is a replica and not original. All right. What is this item? Where did you get it? When and where do you use it? How is it different than the original? And what is your opinion about it? So lots there, okay? And yes, Nigham, you read that question twice, okay? You will have one to two minutes to talk about this topic. You will have one minute to prepare what you're going to say. All right. So uh, we read this carefully. We know what we have to do now. What's your next step? So step one, you read it carefully. What's step two? Okay, so step one, read the card carefully, especially the topic statement, which you should read twice. Okay. What's step two? What do I do now? Yeah. So Abhishek says, identify the category. So Hemant, don't rush into the ideas yet. Identify the category and the tense. That's right, Rajvir. So identify the category and the tense. Very nice. So here, category equals object and tense equals past, right? Because you got it. So past, past perfect, present perfect. Good. Okay. When you're talking about an object, what should you include? Okay. Don't rush through this, Hamant. So what do you include into your part two answer when you're thinking about an object? This will help you to stay fluent thinking about this. <clears throat> okay, so Bumi says, talk about what, where, appearance, use, when you bought it. Okay, Bumi, don't jump around, be structured, right? So Roshni says, talk about its appearance. Hadi says its origin, its function. So yeah, appearance, what does it look like? Its origin, yeah. Where did it come from? Its function, yeah. What do you use it for? Good. Anything else? Yeah, very good, Nick Haim. Nick Haim remembered that. So Nick Haim says the value. Uh, Kevin, you don't necessarily have to talk about the past, present, future. And no, Ramshaw, not necessarily, okay? Only if the question's asking for it, all right? In this question, it's not asking about the future, what you will do with it. It's just asking about the past and the present. Nothing about the future here, okay? So careful with that past, pres present, future strategy, students. It's easy to go off topic, okay? So here, the object, you include the appearance, the origin, the function of it, and its value for you, okay? Or perhaps society. 
That's what you talk about when you talk about an object, all right? Okay, um, I'm going to make another note of that. I know a lot of you students are watching some of these videos about the um, past, present, future. So uh, here's a tip. Be very, very careful with PPF. I know it sounds catchy and cool, but it's not necessarily going to work. So be very careful with the PPF, which means past, present, future strategy. Uh, if the question does not ask you for all three of these time frames, it is not a good idea to do this as you will likely, very likely, go off topic and lose scores for incoherence, okay? It's much more important to answer the questions on the card and answer what the card is asking you, okay? Some cards don't ask you about the past. Many cards don't ask you about the future. And I can see there are some uh, people chatting with me in the uh, speaking of the uh, website. So just give me a second, students. I have to... Uh, turn that off. Uh, Sulia sent me a message. Thanks, Sulia. But I have to go right now. I'm teaching a live class. So I appreciate that. Okay. So um, I'm there sometimes though, students. Sometimes when I'm not teaching a class, you can catch me on the website for sure. Okay. Does that make sense for the uh, past, present, uh, future? Just be really careful about that. Okay. Your goal is always to answer the task that's being asked. It's not to use some global strategy, okay? You have to use critical thinking and you have to address the task, okay? Rangana, does that make sense? So past, present, future, maybe for some, but not for all, definitely not for all cue cards, okay? All right. Um, okay, so let's uh, go to the next step. So we've identified the object. So when we talk about an object, we explain what it looks like, we explain where we got it, how it works, its value to you, and of course, answer the card, right? Okay, what's the next step? Step three, what should you do? This is all happening uh, in the uh, very um, fast one minute, okay? All right. So Rajveer says, identify two to three objects. Yeah. So hopefully you don't have a lot of uh, replicas or knockoff objects, but you have to think of a couple ideas. Yeah, absolutely. So short list. Very nice. Haman. Haman says, have a short list of ideas. So think of two to three possible good answers. What that means is original and easy to talk about. So kind of a funny ha-ha, laugh out loud, LOL. Um, so uh, think of uh, original ideas. So do not use <laughs> replica or knockoff. <laughs> oh, I'm having a laugh to myself here. Knockoff ideas. Um, Okay, even though you're talking about a knockoff product here, okay? All right, um, so give me some ideas. What would be a, some good ideas for knockoff products or replica products that people often come across in the marketplace, okay? I think somebody uh, mentioned uh, Jordan shoes, okay? And that's nice because it's specific, not just shoes, but Jordan shoes. Okay, so Nike, Jordan shoes. Right, Jordan shoes are made by Nike. Nike, Jordan shoes, sure. And to be even more specific, they're basketball shoes. Those are very frequently copies or replicas, absolutely. Yeah, so Nick Haim, uh, you said fake sneaker, but let's even be more specific. Nike, Jordan, basketball shoes, very commonly uh, copied. Um, okay, Charlie Sen, very good. Swiss Army Knife, yeah, those are very commonly copied, right? Swiss Army Knife. Nice one. 
Uh, Gurdip, iPhone from China. Yeah, iPhone, very commonly copied. All right, good. Roshni says a fake gun in for drama made by a 3D printer. Okay. Um, be specific, students. When you come up with your ideas, be specific, especially for this topic. Okay. So you can't just say something like a fake painting. Okay. It has to be specific. So Karen Veer, Casio watch or G-Shock watch. That would be good. And kit. If it's a perfume make it the name of a perfume, right? So be specific, name the very specific item. The more specific you are, the better the band score, okay? So um, I like the uh, G-Shock watch idea, and I also liked the uh, Gucci uh, perfume, sure, okay, or uh, let me say one even more, uh, Versace uh, yellow diamond perfume, okay, at least it's even more specific, I'm not a big expert in perfumes, but I got that not long ago for my wife, so uh, I know the name of that one, okay, good, um, so, yeah, all right, uh, Maloli, it's not a bad idea, but I definitely keep it clean. Okay, you'll probably do better. Um, Michael Fan, Mona Lisa, it's definitely going to be a replica. All right. Okay, so we have some good ones here, students. Let's choose one that we think is going to be easy to talk about. It's original, and uh, you'll get a good score. So let's name these as uh, Nike Jordan basketball shoes, number one, uh, Swiss Army knife, number two. Uh, iPhone number three, G-Shock watch number four, and uh, Versace yellow diamond perfume uh, number five. Okay, uh, which one do you want to talk about? One, two, three, or four. Just vote for it, students, and then uh, when we have a vote, we'll go on that. So Thai Farm says number one, Flower Sun, number three, Number one and three are popular. Natalie says, Maksud says, number five, the perfume. Number three seems to be coming up often. Okay. All right. Okay, lots of numbers. They're flying through the window, and we have a really good mix there. Okay. Um, interesting. Okay, interesting. Uh, you've... Uh, a lot of you have picked number three. This would actually be my last choice. Why? Why do you think number three would be my last choice? A lot of you are thinking, oh, why don't we talk about number three? But that would be my last choice. Why? <laughs> okay, stop voting. Stop voting. Number three. Why would number three be my last choice? It's an interesting question. Okay. There's a logical answer to that. Yeah, so exactly. <laughs> and why do we know it's common? Because all of you are voting for it, right? Um, it's a very common, common choice. And it can be tricky to talk about uh, replica electronics. Okay. So you want an original idea. Now, the IELTS examiners, they're not supposed to compare students' abilities. They're supposed to treat each student separately according to the marking criteria of fluency and coherence, grammar range and accuracy, lexical resource, uh, pronunciation, and they should treat each student as a unique student. But we're all human. Examiners are human too. And it's very difficult to not compare students. Just imagine, okay, just one second here, students. Just imagine if today I examined 20 students for this speaking part, and five or six of them talked about their replica iPhone. 
And one of those students is a band nine. They're like a native speaker. They're very high level. They're doing a PhD. And they gave me a really good speech about their replica iPhone. It will be very difficult for me not to compare the other four people who are talking about their replica iPhone to that one band nine. Does that make sense? So it will be very hard for me to give another high level student band nine if they're not as good as that really high level one. Does that kind of make sense of why you want to have a unique idea? Okay. So the examiner is human. They're not supposed to compare you, but it's very difficult not to compare you if they have a band eight, band nine level student talking about their replica iPhone. Okay, so you don't want to be the next guy or girl coming in there talking about the replica iPhone right after that band nine student just left. Okay, all right. So what I would do, in fact, and this is funny because it was actually not chosen as much, but I'm going to uh, pull a veto power here, is the uh, Swiss Army Knife. I'm going to choose this one today for a couple of reasons, okay? Um, the Swiss Army knife, I think everybody knows what this is. It's the uh, knife that has that little cross on it. It's very popular. Everybody's seen it. It's got the knife part, um, and then it's also got like the uh, scissors and uh, the nail file. So the replica Swiss Army knife is really clever because it's unique. It works really well to answer this question. And the one thing I like about it, so I think Jordan basketball shoes is okay and Versace is okay, but these are gender specific. So Nike Jordan basketball shoes, that's kind of a male topic. And the uh, diamond perfume is a female topic. Now, if I were a girl, this could be a really good choice. If I, well, I am a boy, um, <laughs> this, would, this is a really good choice as well. But I'm going to stay gender neutral here. So for gender neutral, Swiss Army Knife G-Shock watch would be good. Uh, and I think this one is better than the G-Shock watch. Does everybody agree? Okay. Does everybody think that that's good? Because this, girls and guys can use a Swiss Army Knife just like a G-Shock watch. It's maybe a little bit more of a boy toy, but I think girls are, you know, utility knives. They can be useful for camping, things like that. Okay. Does everybody... Everybody makes sense? Agreed? Yeah? All right. So let's go with the uh, knockoff Swiss Army knife. And I think we can talk a lot about that for this topic. Okay? So I think we've got a lot of great information there. Okay, so uh, Swiss Army knife it is. Now I have one more step, one more very important step here. So remember, choice is very important, students. Choice can be the difference of a one band score. Okay? So choosing the right subject to talk about for the cue card can be the difference of a full band score or more in the speaking section, in your speaking section. So I really want to emphasize the importance of choosing, okay? Um, Musafir, maybe you didn't buy it on purpose. Maybe you bought it by accident. Somebody ripped you off. They sold it as the original. Okay. In fact, somebody just complained on our, in our email that they got a knockoff of our product and they can't access the website. So be careful students. Even our products are being knocked off now, our, e our website products. So make sure to buy the right one. Okay. Um, so our choice here is a replica uh, Swiss army knife. And now our next step, step four, I believe at this point, uh, is notes, okay, uh, useful notes. So uh, give me some useful notes for this, okay? So think about what it looks like, think about its origin, think about the questions on the card, and um, uh, give me some useful notes here. Okay, Saki Bose says, bought it from Amazon. Okay, good. 
Yeah, Amazon's pretty good. They're usually not knockoff. eBay is a little bit worse, okay? But sure, it doesn't matter. Got it from Amazon. Um, Zillia, you want to say more than just malfunctioning, okay? Uh, Boomi says 10 centimeter blade. Right? It's that standard. I bet many of you know this, the Victorinox uh, Swiss Army knife. It's red. It's got the little white cross on it. Okay, Sammy says it's multi-purpose. Sure. Tweezers with a Z, sure. Uh, Maksud, $500, maybe a little bit much. I would say probably 60 bucks, sure. Something like that. Okay. Coated with silver. Yeah, Maya, there is a silver version of it. Okay. Um, what are you using it for? Camping, okay. Camping. Cutting nails, okay, sure. So what do you use it for? What do you use it for? Open letters, carve wood, okay. Can opener, sure, Kevin. All right, good, so we're getting lots of good ideas there. Um, that's, that's fine. Acquaintance says killing laugh out loud. I know it's hard to stay away from funny things when you feel pressure, but stay away from awkward, uh, statements. Okay. So cutting fruit. Yeah. If you don't have something for sure, cutting food, fruit. Okay. So chopping, uh, food, cutting or slicing lemon. Sure. Okay, good. So we have lots of good ideas there. Um, what happened with it? Why is it bad? So remember, it's a replica. How do you know it's a replica? What happened? Why is it bad? So keep thinking of the other questions on the card, okay? So you don't, don't get stuck on just one idea. So we've gotten the what it looks like. We've gotten the origin. We've gotten what we use it for, okay? So um, now what's wrong with it? Okay, back John, good. It's dull. Okay, broke the blade, yeah. All right, scissors fell apart. Okay. All right, good. Okay, great. So uh, we're doing really nice uh, job here of all these ideas. I think you're so see students. This is how we know that we've picked a good topic because you can say a lot about it. Look at all of the great ideas that you're coming up with. Deep Basati says uh, fake logo, fake logo, uh, rubbed off the knife. Yeah. So. When uh, items are knockoff, often the logo just comes poof right off, right off. You put it in your pocket. And, hey, where did that little cross go? It's nowhere. Okay, uh, step five. What is it? It's a very important step. We're not done yet. So remember, you can only write about seven, eight of these notes in the one minute just to give you some ideas. And then uh, you need one more really important step. Okay? One more really important step before... The examiner says, your one minute is up. Please begin speaking. Okay, so before that happens, you need one more critical step. That's right, Beg John. Get your first sentence ready. That's right, Nick Haim. First sentence. All right. Um, so uh, give me your first sentence, okay? You want to start right away when the examiner starts you. So get your first sentence. So think about your first sentence sentence 
So you can start speaking right away when the examiner says your one minute dot 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 dot. Okay, so one of the common mistakes, one very common mistake is students take 10 to 20 seconds, I've even seen more, sadly, uh, seconds to start saying good information. Okay, so you, you don't want that. You need to start right away. Get that first sentence ready. Okay. All right. Uh, Rajveer says, a knockoff item which I bought from Amazon a couple of months back is a Swiss army knife. Perfect. Addresses the question, targets the topic, the controlling idea, gives the specific subject. Very good, Rajveer. Uh, Beg John says, the counterfeit product which I have gotten recently is a Swiss army knife. Very nice, Beg John. That's it. Boom, right into it. Okay. Nicely done. Okay, that's what you want. Hemant says, although I like buying original products, recently someone offered me a Swiss Army repli replica I was able to buy for camping gear. Okay, Hemant, that's not bad. Um, although I like buying original products, it's a little general, it's a little bit off, but it's acceptable, it's acceptable. Okay, all right. Uh, I would like to talk about is not a good start, Zillia. Again, it's just cookie cutter. Everybody's using it. Nobody's getting points for saying, I would like to talk about. Or uh, there are many knockoff products which I have purchased and seen. No, okay? The, everybody's saying it. You're not getting points. Remember, students, if everyone else is saying it, you are not getting points. Like, I would like to talk about, everybody's saying it, you're not getting points. Um, or, there, there are many replica products out there but the one I want to, everybody's saying it, you're not getting points. Is that clear, students? So you want to be direct instead. Be direct. Address the question, specific subject, and controlling idea. Then you're getting points, as Rajveer said. Okay, I'm going to go back to that one because that was really nice, Rajveer. I'm going to read yours one more time for everyone. So Rajveer says, a knockoff item which I bought from Amazon a couple of months back is a Swiss army knife. Boom, you're on your way to a band nine. Okay, that's how you do it. So a knockoff because a replica is a knockoff. A knockoff product which I bought from Amazon. Now, remember, the examiner it doesn't know what you know. They're like your grandma and grandpa. Amazon? What are you talking about, Rajveer? I thought the Amazon's a jungle in South America. Okay, maybe your grandma, grandpa doesn't talk like that, Rajveer, but you get the idea. So a knockoff product, which I bought from Amazon, a major online retailer, uh, a couple of months back uh, is a Swiss army knife. Nice. Okay. Otherwise, beautiful. So, you know, always pushing to be better and better. All right. So, um, here we go. Good start. Students, speaking class, speak and repeat. Let's do this. A knockoff product, which I bought from Amazon, a major online retailer a couple of months back, is a Swiss army knife. All right, great. Uh, give me the next sentence, students. So now the examiner says, 
your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. You begin speaking. You say this sentence, okay? Then what do you say after? All right. So what do you say after? Okay, here in the beginning, especially just think of appearance, origin, function, value. Okay, so Nick Ham says it's about, it's about a 10 centimeter blade, 3 centimeter white with a special white cross logo. Yeah, so it's a, a famous multi-purpose pocket knife folding pocket knife with a uh, pocket knife roughly uh, 10 centimeters long and three uh, centimeters wide it's red in color and has a clearly Identi identifiable uh, white cross logo on it. Sure. Yeah. So that's good. All right. Okay. Uh, Musafir says it's on discount. I got it for 60 bucks. I was impressed with the, uh, cheap price. Yeah. Musafir, that would be a nice way to, um, follow this one. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Pooja says I was keenly looking for something that it could assist me during camping, um, which, uh, was coming up on the nearing weekend. Yeah, good. Okay. Elena says it's 10 centimeters long, three centimeters wide, multi-purpose pocket knife, which is blue in color with a red cross logo. Sure, Elena, there's different colors actually, so it's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, very nice. Okay. So good. Um, Musafir, that was a good idea. Why did you buy it, right? Because it was uh, cheaply discounted, right? So, um, I had a camping trip, uh, coming up in a couple of weeks and I had really wanted a, a knife like this. So I went online and found, uh, one for a great price just 60 bucks on Amazon and I ordered it right away. Okay, sure, fantastic, good. So we have the appearance. Now we're thinking function, right? We're thinking function, we're moving along. If I don't get to everybody's comment, don't worry about it, just keep writing. Um, I'll add them together as you can see, okay? Kobe says, it has a variety of function. I can use it to start a fire, cut up vegetables uh, for making food, right? Kobe, a little bit more details. Um, Roshni says, as soon as uh, I saw this product, it was on sale and I wanted a unique color and extra blades. I was happy that it only cost about $100. Very good, Roshni. Okay, nice. Hitesh says, as I'm a tour guide, um, one of my colleagues suggested me to buy this Swiss Army knife, uh, so I get I decided to get it from Alibaba. Yeah, Alibaba, eBay, these, those would be good alternatives to Amazon as well. Absolutely. Grino Latino says, a camping winter tent, which I bought from Amazon. Okay, Grino, we're going off topic there. We want to stay with our Swiss Army knife in this case. Elena says, I bought it because I got a great discount, spent just $30. Sure. You can use the expression, the deal seemed too good to be true. And as it turns out, 
it was, okay? I'm teaching you an expression here, students. Repeat after me, okay? The deal seemed too good to be true, and as it turns out, it was, okay? All right. Uh, so Hemant says it has eight utility extensions, which could be really helpful during my camping. I can use all those extensions like uh, blade, scissors, screwdriver, and a peeler. Okay, sure. So um, the knife has, let's say, uh, five different tools, including a blade, scissors, a peeler, screwdriver, and tweezers. I was planning to use it for cooking, setting up my tent, some arts and crafts, like carving a walking stick. Okay, sure, okay. So what do you use it for, right? The function is really important. Musafir says, also, if anything broke, I can fix it in day to day. It was a long-term investment for me for this camping trip and for future trips as well, even opening up a drink. Okay, good. Pachu says it has multi-functions such as cutting, chopping, cutting nails. I used it while on tour. Yeah, okay, good. So now what happened to the knife? How do I know that it's a knockoff? Okay, don't leave this until the last minute. Remember, if you get stuck, and even if you don't, look at the questions on the card in the two minutes. Okay, it's very important. So we look at the questions on the card. We wanna make sure that we answer these so that we get task completion, fluency, coherence points, okay? So what is the item? Where did you get it? When and where do you use it? How is it different than the original? What's your opinion about it? We really need to make sure that we answer these last two questions, okay? All right. So uh, Pooja says, soon enough during my camping trip when I was trying to open my wine bottle to celebrate, it just broke. Oh no, Pooja, your bottle of wine, how terrible. Absolutely, yeah, very good. Uh, when I opened it for the first time, I tried to open a can of tuna. Suddenly the blade bent and the knife broke. Good, Sammy. Elena, one day when I was trimming some twigs in my garden, the blade just snapped and immediately I realized it was a counterfeit product. Very good, Elena. Rajvir says, unfortunately, it's broke. Its blade broke after three days of use and it's logo had rubbed off. I realized that it was a counterfeit item. Yeah. So here we go. Unfortunately, on that first camping trip, after just three gentle uses, the blade broke and the signature logo rubbed off the handle. Immediately, I realized that I had bought a counterfeit as the original is world renowned for being very
well built and durable. Okay, good. Now, uh, of course, make sure that you're answering the final question too, which is, what is your opinion about it? So what is your opinion about it? Okay. Karen Beer says the chrome turned rusty. That was a clear indication. It was a counterfeit product because the original is stainless steel, right? Karen Beer, stainless steel. So uh, remember students, clear explanation. You're talking to your grandma or grandpa. They might not know uh, what a Swiss army knife is, right? So you have to say the original is really well built. It uses stainless steel. It shouldn't rust. So Karen Beer, you can say a little bit more after saying that it got rusty, okay? So Kevin says, since then I took the advice of my friends to be careful about purchasing uh, counterfeit products as clearly I was very disappointed by this. Pooja says, I was strict. I wasted time after coming back. I returned it right away ex and expressed my disappointment in the reviews. Now I make sure that I order the right product by reading customer reviews, right? Gurpreet Kaur says, I found it fictitious when I used it just hardly two times as the knife came off from the handle. Gurpinder, nice. Okay. Kim is asking, I heard a lot of IELTS coaches say that we should use idioms and advanced vocabulary. Is it right or wrong? Uh, Kim, it's right only if and only if you can use it correctly. Students, you should never use uh, unique words or idioms that are not used correctly and you're not sure about because your score will go even lower, okay? If you create confusion, so be really careful about that. Sammy says, I understand it's better to buy an item from the proper company's website now. And I was definitely disappointed about this purchase, right? So opinion, give a little bit of qualitative information. Uh, certainly, I was not only disappointed, but also very upset with this purchase after returning home, I <clears throat> mailed back the knife and sent a customer complaint to Amazon. In the future, I will only purchase such products from the official retailers website. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, students. There were some great answers there. Uh, again, students, the same thing for us. Um, please, uh, when you're buying our products or IELTS products, make sure to only buy from our websites uh, and only search for our logos as well. Unfortunately, even our products are being uh, counterfeited or copied sometimes, as we found out in the last year. Okay. Um, so students, let's go through this. Uh, here we go from the top. Make sure that we didn't miss any questions on the card. What is this item? Where did you get it? When and where do you use it? How is it different than the original? And what is your opinion about it? So how is it different than the original? Make sure you compare clearly. Okay. Here we go. Students repeat after me. Nice and loud, speak and repeat. A knockoff product, which I bought from Amazon, a major online retailer, a couple of months back is a Swiss Army knife. It's a famous multi-purpose folding pocket knife, roughly 10 centimeters long and three centimeters wide. 
It's red in color and has a clearly identifiable White Cross logo on it. I had a camping trip coming up in a couple of weeks and I had really wanted a knife like this. So I went online and found one for a great price, just 60 bucks on Amazon. And I ordered it, ordered it right away. The deal seemed too good to be true and it turned out it was. The knife has five different tools, including a blade, scissors, peeler, screwdriver, and tweezers. I was planning to use it for cooking, setting up my tent, some arts and crafts, like carving a walking stick. Unfortunately, on that first camping trip, after just three gentle uses, the blade broke and the signature logo rubbed off the handle. Immediately, I realized that I had bought a counterfeit, as the original is world-renowned for being very well built and durable. Certainly, I was not only disappointed, but also very upset with this purchase. After returning home, I mailed it back. I mailed the knife back and sent a customer complaint to Amazon. In the future, I will not only purchase such products from the I will only purchase such products from the official retailer's website. All right, some nice fluency there. If you're having trouble with that, just go back, watch the video again, practice again. This video will be available on the channel in about an hour after it finishes processing. Uh, students, that's it for this class. Uh, come back tomorrow because tomorrow at the same time we will have uh, speaking part three. And that speaking part three, the questions will be related to this speaking part two. Elena, you'll see some more of those copyright type questions tomorrow, okay? You're very, very welcome. Thank you, Elena, for suggesting this uh, topic for today's class. Remember, members, you can suggest topics. Everybody to join our premium package, do it on our websites, aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general. Make sure to get the original, okay? Much love to all of you. Keep up the good work. Push forward. Now's a great time to practice your English, your communication as much as possible. Remember to use the speaking function on the websites to connect with other students. Bye for now, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.